Hello there and welcome. It is an exciting day for me and I'm so glad to be able to share this with you. Thanks for tuning in. Today is day zero of a major transformation for me and I wanted to share it with you. I feel like my purpose on earth is to inspire, educate, and share. And this is really at the core of it here is about health and well-being and consciously evolving ourselves, our culture, finding harmony within and externally with each other, one another, and the planet, the universe. And so I am embarking upon a journey tomorrow. Today is the preparation day. And I'm going to be doing what many might feel is an extreme procedure. Uh, to me, it seems totally reasonable, logical, based on all the research and study that I've done, reading, watching videos, watching documentaries, having conversations with people who have done it or who are experts in the field. I'm going to embark upon an extended water only fast. Now it's interesting, for the maybe 50 people, or well, maybe more, that I've told I'm doing this, about two <laughs> out of all those had nothing but positive things to say, encouragement, oh, that's great, that's smart, yeah, that's a wonderful thing to do. Everyone else, you know, shrieked in horror or con was concerned for me or cautioned me or just expressed some type of negative emotional reaction to the fact that I plan on undertaking an extended period water only fast. So I'm committed to making this vlog about the experience so that I can share it and again, maybe inspire, maybe educate, definitely share obviously what I'm doing and what I'm going through. So I wanna talk about a few aspects of the fast and how it came about, who my, my mentors and heroes are in the area of fasting, why I believe that fasting is such a powerful, wonderful healing mechanism tool that we can employ to improve our health. And what else? I know there's one other aspect here. Well, the where I'm going and the what I'm doing and all that stuff uh, and my reasons for doing it, what I hope to get out of it as well. And then in a separate video, I'm gonna do a more personal expression of what I have personally going on health-wise that I'm trying to address here um, more specifically, but I'll, I'll talk the general here. So uh, the basics of what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be checking into the True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California which is founded by Dr. Alan Goldhammer, uh, was founded in 1984. He's actually a chiropractor, but he had an opportunity to do an internship for six months at a fasting clinic himself, where he learned all about the powers, magic, and the nuts and bolts of guiding people through extended period water only fasting. So, I'm uh, gonna be checking in to True North tomorrow, which I'm calling day one. Today is day zero, the day before, my preparation day. I'm packing and preparing, tying up all my loose ends around home and with Seoul. And we're getting ready to head up there and do this thing. Today's my last day of eating, so I've been eating very, very carefully. I had a fruit and nut bowl for breakfast. Um, and I actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. <laughs> I had that yesterday. Today, I had a beautiful green bowl for breakfast. You may have seen those around on my social media. I love to post pictures of the green bowl because I think it's the most beautiful meal that I eat and they're wonderful. It's like, if you don't know a green bowl, it's like a green smoothie. Now by green, I mean it has kale and spinach and avocado in it, but otherwise it's mostly fruit based. Today I had some mango and papaya and all that kind of stuff. Uh, topped with wonderful fruits and nuts and coconut and cacao nibs. Beautiful, beautiful breakfast. And for lunch, I had a turmeric cauliflower stew that I made yesterday uh, over a little bit of leftover sweet potato chunks that I had from a dinner a couple nights ago. And tonight for dinner, I'm gonna have more leftover vegetables and sweet potatoes and um, offering to maybe make a little bit of rice or quinoa. We'll see what the guys think and uh, we'll eat accordingly. That'll be, of course, my last meal before I go in. Now they recommend it, True North, that you eat very carefully the few days leading up to the fast because that will help the transition very much be a lot smoother and more comfortable. If we ate a bunch of 
heavy rich foods the, the the day leading up to it then it'd be more of a shock to the system when you cut out all food so i've been eating very carefully and following the program uh, meticulously i actually went to a winter solstice party the other night and i mean i ate the crudite and the fruit and that is it i drank pellegrino that is it i was offered wine when i first walked in i said oh no i am preparing for this thing and uh, there was a little group talking there what thing i said okay now i gotta explain my whole thing <laughs> like i am for you so I've been eating carefully on my preparation day. I am prepared. I'm mostly packed. I have a little bit more work to do on the packing, but plenty of time today, this evening to do it. And then shoop, truck on up there in the morning and check in to the True North Health Center. I am so excited. It's one of the most exciting things I've ever done. I'm, I'm grateful for knowing about it. I'm proud of myself for doing this and checking myself in and embarking upon this endeavor, which again, to some may seem extreme uh, or drastic, to some may seem horrifying, and others recognize that, oh, I think there's some inherent wisdom in that fasting thing. That, that's a good idea. Let me know how it goes. And others, oh yeah, Evan, you're going to be great. We fasted. It's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so I learned about fasting, again, through a few different methods, reading. I have a book, A Complete Guide to Fasting. I've watched a couple documentaries about fasting. And I've watched tons and tons of lectures and Q&As and just um, to-camera talks. Uh, my original guru, mentor, hero for fasting is a guy named Lauren Lockman. And he is down in Costa Rica. He started a retreat center for fasting called the Tanglewood Wellness Center. And I've watched so many of his videos. I'm really, really familiar with his philosophies and outlooks and experiences and his thoughts and beliefs about eating and diet and what is appropriate food for a human being and how do you achieve optimal health and wellness. And I'll tell you, I mean, if you can take him at his word, first of all, he certainly looks like a super healthy, skinny, energetic guy. Uh, but if you take him at his word, he claims that he has been eating raw vegan, mainly mono fruit, fruitarian, and occasional, when his body tells him he needs them, green salads with tomato and avocado. And that's it for 30 years. He also claims that for 30 years, he has never been sick. Now, the way that that works, according to Lauren, is that he has a very, very strong immune system. So you could sneeze on him with a cold and he's not going to get sick because his body has a strong enough mechanism to repel those germs from invading his tissues and actually fully manifesting as a sickness, as a cold. So he also has claimed to have done incredible things like um, had an infection in his pinky. Uh, he was holding a cat while it was being injected at the vet and the cat sank its teeth into his pinky, the pinky swelled up and he went to a doctor and, uh, or maybe it was even the vet who told him, uh, I don't remember specifically, but they were advising him to take antibiotics. You, you need antibiotics. And he said, no, 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 no. I'm going to fast for three days. You watch. I'm going to be fine. Sure enough, he was fine. He fasted. It worked. Even more incredibly, he claims to have been bitten. These are my snake fangs bitten by the uh, one of the most venomous, if not the most venomous snakes in Costa Rica where he lives. And again, he simply did a three day fast. He has his powerful immune system. He came out of it unscathed completely, full recovery and in a matter of days. He truly believes in the absolute power of fasting. And when we say the power of fasting, what we're really saying is the power of the body to heal itself through the process of not distracting the attention of the body with digestion. So that's the real heart of why we're fasting. We fast so that the body's not so focused on digesting. When we're eating three meals a day, our body's always busy digesting and it can't do the work of healing, detoxifying and cleansing. So that's really what I'm going for. I'm going to extended period water fast, for the body to then have the time and attention to be able to devote its resources towards healing, cleansing, and detoxification. And uh, again, I just couldn't be more excited. I feel like I'm really taking my health into my own hands now and doing something that I really believe in based on all I've studied and researched. So 
Oh, what else did I say I was going to cover here? Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be doing vlogs along the way, so, so we'll get into that. Um, I'm going to talk a little about why I believe I need the fasting myself personally without getting too into the nitty-gritty details of my health uh, situation and conditions. But mainly, essentially, you could look at this fast as a reset for the body and the palate uh, and maybe the mind as well and spirit. We'll see. Uh, I'm open and I'm, I'm going in with an open mind and an open heart and I'm really look, looking forward to reaping the benefits of making this effort. But in general, I have a number of sort of minor health issues, although lately I've really felt kind of junky in my digestion with uh, kind of IBS type things and I constantly feel bloated and just not great. And I've been mainly pursuing a, a plant-based diet and I've, uh, I have a food addiction. I, I want to come clean and acknowledge that I feel I have a food addiction. It's mainly related to sugar and sweets, but it's a food addiction in general, really, because I will binge or sneak in all kinds of things that are not on a plant-based diet or not you know, sugar, sugar-free. Mainly the diet that I've been striving for is plant-based, uh, gluten-free and no, I call it no soak, no sweeteners of any kind. And at home, I do pretty darn well. With, with At home and cooking, I do excellent because I don't keep sugar in the house and we don't use any gluten, no wheat, no wheat flour, anything like that. And we eat plant-based. We don't buy anything that's not plant-based for the house. We do most of our shopping at the farmer's market. We now grow a lot of our food. So it's really when I go out and the... Uh, oh, too convenient option of clicking a button on this phone right here and having the food ding dong show right up at your door. I think it almost should be illegal that I can go to my phone, press a button, and 20 minutes later, ice cream sundaes and cupcakes and donuts show up at my door. That, that, that's just too easy. And for those of us who are food addicted, it's too tempting and it's too dangerous. So I've been trying really hard and, and willpower is just not enough. And setting a goal and a plan and a diet, it's just not proven to be enough. Even engaging a support system around me of tribe and community has not quite been enough, especially when no one around me really wants to pursue absolute, optim, op, absolute optimal health as I'm trying to pursue here. So uh, one of the things about going into this fast is I want it to be such an effort and such a process that I go through that I wouldn't dare want to taint the body then after getting it so cleansed. Um, the other thing is I want to shock the body into some, some repair. I want to reset the metabolism and the gut biome. And another big thing is to reset the palate and the taste buds. When we eat a lot of these salts and sugars and oils, it, it just kind of coats the taste bug, buds it dulls them down, and then you have to keep adding the salt and the fat and the sugar to be able to enjoy food. Otherwise, it tastes bland, it's not worth eating, food is no longer a joy, and that's, that just doesn't feel like any way to live. So I wanna get that stuff reset so I can really, really taste the natural foods again. And the thing about the True North Health Center, and that differs from Lauren Lachman, Again, I said Lauren Lockman was the, the guy I really followed at first. I wanted to go down to Costa Rica. He really recommends a 21-day water-only fast. And uh, you go to Costa Rica, you immerse yourself in that beautiful, lush, tropical environment in the rainforest in his wellness center. And essentially, while you're fasting, you're drinking plenty of water, you're just lying around. It's very sedentary. That's one of the key components to water-only fasting is you don't go about your normal life. You don't expend energy the way you normally do, the way I am right now, <laughs> packing and running around and making last meals and all that. You are very sedentary and very restful and introspective and you're not doing, you're not even reading really and watching documentaries. You're really hunkering down and nurturing the body so it can do its healing and its cleansing and its detoxification. So then, then I started following Alan Goldhammer and True North Health Center because a trip to Costa Rica for a month just didn't seem responsible. And that's because I care for three 90 year olds. I have people working with me on the soul project and just to walk away from all that for an extended period of time, be within very limited reach and very limited, um, you know, 
contact and certainly not able to get back home in any reasonable amount of time for any emergency that might arise, it just felt irresponsible. And I wanna honor my commitments and really stay close, closer to home than Costa Rica. So that's when I discovered the True North Health Center. It's funny because when I had my initial phone call with Dr. Goldhammer, who is the founder and the, the main guy behind the True North Health Center, um, I didn't know who he was really. I hadn't done the research on that health center and on him personally. I didn't know I'd be speaking with him. A guy calls on the phone and said, hi, I'm Dr. Goldhammer from True North and I want to discuss your, your situation. And boy, now that I really know who he is and I've watched a lot of videos of him, a lot of lectures and interviews and uh, to camera talks that he's given, I really admire and respect him. He's another real guru and hero of fasting. Um, I'm so looking forward to being up there in his his you know center and meeting him and having those personal talks and i'm going to try and capture some of those on video too and i know they want to do what they can to help promote their center and what they're doing and just promote health and well-being around the world which is their mission so uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of those on camera as well when we talk to him and you can hear from him directly but uh, i i love everything he has to say i believe everything he has to say everything is just a clean clear message about getting healthy about fasting about what we're doing to our bodies, how we're poisoning ourselves, how we're either killing ourselves slowly or at least setting ourselves up for a very uncomfortable, sickly existence at some point in our life, most often the later years. And I really don't want to end up that way. A lot of, uh, well, first of all, I was going to say a lot of this comes from, but my desire to get healthy comes from watching my mother, my poor, poor mother, as I put it, kill herself with sugar and dairy. It was nine and a half years ago, she died in 2010. And I, I just look at it like sugar and dairy killed my mother. She killed herself with those weapons. And she was addicted to food, of course, as well. I feel like I inherited that addiction from her. And she could not stop. Willpower was not enough. Warnings from the doctor were not enough. They said, Betty, you're, you're pre-diabetic. You gotta get off the sugar. She couldn't stop. Betty, you're diabetic, you gotta get off the sugar or you're gonna have to go on in. She couldn't stop. Betty, you're gonna have to get off the sugar or your, your kidneys are gonna, she couldn't stop. Betty, you're, you're gonna have to go on dialysis if you don't stop the sugar, she couldn't stop. Betty, you're gonna need dialysis regularly if you don't, she couldn't stop. Betty, you're gonna have a stroke and die if you don't stop the sugar. And she couldn't stop. And I drove one hour to her hometown to see her every single day for the last five months of her life. Fortunately, I was in a position I could do that. I wasn't working at the time and I drove every day, one hour to be her caregiver, take her to appointments, etc. She couldn't stop, wouldn't stop, was so sick, so unhealthy, so miserable every day, day after day, watching her with the strokes and the falling and the dialysis and ultimately the death. And I don't want to end up that way. That was such a wake up call for me. And, and I'm here to admit truths and, and you know, reveal my, my true self here. At that time, as a coping mechanism, while I was caring for my mother and witnessing all this damage she was doing to herself, I'm driving around smoking joints, going to the 7-Eleven, drinking Slurpees, eating Ho-Hos. That was my coping mechanism as, you know, kind of, wow, <laughs> crazy as that is to admit, but I want to come clean in an effort to share and inspire others. Maybe you're someone who, who does something similar. Maybe you know someone who is. Maybe you're afraid of falling into some of these traps. And I want you to know that someone cares and that there is a better way, a healthier, more nurturing way, and that there are people who know how to help us get through these things. So I've really forced myself to eat much, much better in the last couple weeks in preparation for this fasting and it's hard but i just for this has been willpower i get voices that tell me what i can eat and what i can snack on and what i can feast on and what would be delicious and where's the ice cream place and the cookie place and the bakery and the pizza and all that stuff that i know is bad and that i pay for because i feel bad after i eat it but i just do it anyway it's like the people who drink and know they're going to get a hangover but they keep drinking and so I am really looking forward to the reset and living, staying the course and really committing to and living the clean, healthy diet of 
what they recommend at the True North Health Center, which is plant-based, whole foods, and SOS free, salt, oil, sugar. I have a degree in hotel and restaurant management and I've been a concierge and a restaurateur. I'm an investor partner in, a, in an up and coming restaurant chain, Little Jam, in case anyone's wondering, two locations in San Francisco, growing all over all the time. Look forward to a uh, Little Jam coming near you soon, hopefully. And I have always acknowledged clearly that restaurants only can succeed when they sell salt, fat, and sugar. Because those are the flavoring ingredients. And without those, your food doesn't taste good. No one's going to come. not going to be viable. So I am really looking forward to getting off of those damaging ingredients that elevate your pleasure senses. And this is, I'm going to get into this too a little bit. They wrote a book at True North Health Center, Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Doug Lyle, who is a psychologist on property there, who you can understand why they would need a psychologist to help people really stay the course and, and get onto this healthy lifestyle and maintain it. And they wrote a book called The Pleasure Trap. What a book. I think every human being, especially in the United States, should read the book, The Pleasure Trap. It is powerful and brilliant information. They talk about uh, dopamine and dopamine addiction and that when we eat those things that taste good, it releases dopamine in the brain, which is a chemical signal to us to do more of that. Nature gave us that very important element of motivation through the, the signal of dopamine so that we would keep eating and we would maintain our, our life and survive. And, you know, any species is on earth to survive and to procreate and, and continue their, their, their species. So, Dopamine is a powerful chemical and it tells us to do more of that thing that we've done. And these hyper dopamine inducing foods like salt, fat, and sugar um, just keep triggering our mechanism in the brain to keep doing more. That's why willpower is futile in stopping um, these addictions to, to food and to the dopamine itself. So very important. Also, they talk about in the book that every species on earth shares the same motivational triad. Pursue pleasure, avoid pain, and conserve energy. And so it's easy to understand why when you press a button <laughs> on your phone to conserve energy, food shows up at the door, and pursue pleasure, eat pepperoni pizza and cheeseburgers and hot fudge sundaes and cupcakes, that you're gonna be motivated to do that. The catch is, we're avoiding the pain of hunger, et cetera, but we're not avoiding the future pain. It's very force, it's, it's, it's short-sighted because we're not recognizing and acknowledging the future pain of ending up like my mother, being sick every day and dying prematurely, earlier than we need to. And so that's what they talk about there at True North Health Center is, Increasing your longevity and being healthier, feeling better, more well while we are alive. So that's what this is all about. That's what I'm going for. Um, I, I have the, the, the gut issues. I'm bloated. I, I was diagnosed by a doctor as having an overbloom of candida. There's a lot of bacteria that live in our body that help us digest, but there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. And the candida is not the good bacteria. It's more like a fungus that just grows and it feeds on sugar and it feeds on these unhealthy foods that if we eliminate, we'll starve them. So I'm taking the more drastic measure of starving them off by fasting for an extended period of time on water only, hoping that they'll die off. And then when I do the refeeding process, I'll build back up based on the good bacteria. So that's my plan. And that's my main health situation. The other health situation, I was diagnosed with quote, something going on with my right lung. The chest x-ray showed negative, so we don't know exactly what it is, but I've been assured by three different medical professionals, intuitive healers, that there is something going on in my right lung and that it hasn't manifested enough to the point of being recognizable on a, uh, a chest x-ray. So I want to get the body and the gut biome in better shape and in 
improve my immune system so I can ward off any further damage that I can again begin this process of healing, cleansing, and detoxifying so I can get well. So mainly the digestive issues and the uh, lung issue uh, and the occasional migraine headaches are, are mainly what I'm going in for. Again, I'll do another video and get more specific uh, about the details of all the health issues I'm experiencing. So uh, you can take a, a listen to that. And did I cover everything I, I set out to? So, uh, well, I'm going to be reporting more along the way. You now know why I'm doing it, where I'm going, in whose care I'll be, how I learned about fasting, why I believe in it. Um, they have told me on my intake call that given my, my weight and height, which is low, I'm a skinny guy, especially now that I've been eating mostly plant-based for a while now, a couple years, um, I, I was always appeared quite skinny, but uh, I, I learned of a phrase that's great. Uh, the acronym is SOTO FOTI, skinny on the inside, fat on the outside. Um, did I do that wrong? SOTO FOTI, skinny on the outside, fat on the inside. So I appear skinny, but around my organs is caked on with fat. And I think that was my case because in the last couple of years, I've decreased by 20 pounds. I weigh 20 pounds less than I did before, and I always felt and appeared skinny, uh, at least you know, athletic and slender. So they are concerned that um, I don't have enough fat and, and nutritional reserves to be able to do too long of an extended fast. So they were anticipating a five to seven day fast would, would be all my body would tolerate well. I'm hoping I can push it to a 10 day, but it's gonna be all up to my bio indicators anyway. When you arrive at True North Health Center, they do a full medical evaluation. They do have doctors on site and a number of different practitioners. Again, chiropractor, psychologist, they have massage therapists, and most importantly, the educators, nutritionists, a wonderful chef up there, Ramses Bravo is the chef, and he was just a regular old, you know, uh, high level omnivorous chef who converted to adopting the, the diet prescribed by True North Health Center and has thrived in cooking the whole food plant-based, SOS free, again, that's no salt, no oil, no sugar um, diet. And he's done two cookbooks, Bravo and Bravo Express, which both of which I, I purchased in advance so I could start becoming familiar with this type of diet and this type of food they're serving up there. I won't be eating it for a while, and that's great, that's what I want, but when I do refeed, I'll be able to enjoy his wonderful food. Uh, it, gradually, you, you start, uh, I don't even know how they do the refeeding there, so we'll see, but I know you start small, and then you build up your portions, and, and you expand, you start with a, a narrow range of foods, and you expand the, uh, the cuisine. So, um, the first day, you have your full examination with the doctor, and copious notes and records, and uh, I'm gonna try and see if they're willing to do those on camera as well, so I'll be able to share that. And then you are checked in on by a clinician every single day you're there, and once a week you have another full doctor examination. So if my bio indicators uh, uh, indicate a green light that it's safe to keep fasting, uh, which is you know weight, and uh, blood pressure, vitals, temperature, hydration level, all that kind of thing, then, okay, I'm gonna hope I can go a little longer because I, I believe, after all I've studied, I have come to believe that the optimal fast is the 21 day. And one of the main things that you're doing in a 21 day fast is you're cleansing out the small intestines. The way Lauren Lockman puts it is that every time we eat little traces get left, little crumbs get left behind in the small intestine. They don't all flush all the way through. And so you can imagine of decades and decades and decades of eating meal after meal after meal, three meals a day, even if it's the tiniest little crumb, there's still tons of stuff in there. Now he fasts people down in Costa Rica where after you finish eating and you start the fast, now for a day or two, you're gonna continue eliminating the food that you had eaten before you got there. And then the system goes kind of dormant for a bit. And after a few days, you start eliminating again. Where does that come from? That's all gunk that's inside of us. It's been there for decades. And it's preventing our system from really doing its process of healing, cleansing, and detoxifying because we got stuff in there it's dealing with, blocking the way and blocking the cells and the tissues. 
So really by doing the extended period of fast, it gives the body a chance to flush all that out because it's not focusing on digesting the new stuff we're putting in. So I'm hoping to go as long, I plan to go as long as I can. I'm hoping it'll even be longer than the five to seven days that they're initially predicting my body will tolerate. And we'll see, I'll be vlogging, hopefully plan to do every day along the way. I hope I can live up to that, but uh, I'll hope to at least be vlogging plenty and sharing the experience of how I'm feeling, how it's going, how my body's responding, and uh, we'll just follow up and continue on from there. And so one thing I wanted to be sure and do with this video today is share with you my face. So I'm gonna get a little closer up so you can take a look. Here's my face now. I have, so this is my tripod here. I have suffered, I don't say suffer, I have been, well, what do I say? Let's just say suffer. I have suffered from acne uh, for most of my life since I was about, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. And I'm now uh, 48. I am actually going to celebrate my 49th birthday in True North Health Center and in, a, in a couple weeks. And I, um, I still get acne. I, for the last 15 years, have been, uh, I, I finally found, I've, I've gone to dermatologists, I've done different pharmaceuticals to treat acne, and some work, some don't. Ultimately, I realized that some over-the-counter uh, preparations uh, are extremely effective, at least in my case, for, for um, controlling the acne outbreaks that I get. And uh, I used to have a lot, even on my back and everything, my neck, certainly my face. Um, as an adult, and, and moving on through 20s and 30s and 40s, uh, only really have them in my face. I kept waiting, you know, again, I just, I can't believe what I just said, 20s, 30s, 40s, I'm now 48 and almost 49, still getting acne. I kept thinking it was gonna go away. That's a teenage thing, hormones and junk food and whatever. And even through eating better and less stress in life and being an adult, I've still, got the acne that wants to come out. I learned from my wonderful doctor that that's actually all part of the candida and the compromised immune system and that it's all, all of my issues are related. But I wanted to share my face with you today because um, I have now quit all of the over-counter um, medications that I was using to treat acne. And I'll tell you what they are, they're, they're quite simple. Uh, one of them is a face wash that is a benzoyl peroxide 10% solution. And the other is a pad, a cotton pad, that is soaked in a preparation of salicylic acid. And I always said, I'm the Stradex poster boy because I use them regularly and my skin looks great. But I, I even get compliments on my skin, not just that it doesn't have acne, but that it looks great, it's glowing, smooth, whatever. And now I don't know if they were just being kind or that's true, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I know that when I stop any of those things, and if I'm like an hour late, because I'm regimented, I wash in the morning, I do a Stridex in the mid midday, and then I wash at night. And if I miss that by an hour the next day, almost without fail, I will get some zit here or there. I'll break out. And uh, it's one notorious video I have such a hard time watching. We went to the CES, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and right as we're heading out there, I just popped out a big zit on my chin, and every video I did out there, every interview, every to camera introduction video is this big red spot. It's just, oh, I don't wanna see that. You know how it is. You wanna look your best, and if you don't, you feel self-conscious. So, um, I am now going for it. I'm revealing myself. I've quit those medications. I'm washing my face regularly with just a simple Dr. Bronner's liquid soap. And I'm gonna see how that goes. The, I might be breaking out soon. And that's, I'm, I'm ready and willing. And I'm gonna do that with no, hopefully there'll be no, I can't uh, anticipate how I'll react emotionally to a situation I'm not yet in. But I'm hoping that I'm gonna have no regrets, no shame, no, um, you know, uh, what did I just say a second ago? Not self-confidence, but uh, yeah, I don't want to lose my, I won't lose my self-confidence and, and um, I'm going to be confident in my self-image even if I have zits on my face. So just know that that might be coming. Maybe I'll get lucky and it won't, but my hope is that as I move forward in the fasting and heal and cleanse the body and rebalance the gut biome, that I won't be breaking out this way and that uh, my doctor suspects that the candida is causing a lot of these things. And if I can get that under control, maybe I won't be breaking out with the acne at that point. But as of right now, 
I'm not using any of those over-the-counter treatments for acne. So we'll see how that goes. Um, that's basically my story. I'm, I'm gonna, again, keep sharing these as much as I can. And again, I couldn't be more excited. I'm really putting my trust and faith in the hands of True North Health Center and Dr. Goldhammer and his whole team. And I will be reporting back to you along the way. Thank you so much for joining me for this vlog. And just stay tuned to the Soul Documentary channel for more installments. Please subscribe, hit the notification button. We keep, we got tons of material to put up. Soul Documentary has a re whole new refreshed vibe and look uh, and um, program for content for 2020, the year of clear vision. So you wanna follow us and check out what we're doing. And we're so grateful to you for joining us and being here today and in the future. Sending so much love, hugs, and good vibes. Again, I feel like I'm here on earth to inspire, educate, and share. And I hope you'll join me and receive the love and the inspiration and that you'll be pursuing your path to health, well-being, and be an inspiration for those around you. Let's get healthy, evolve our consciousness, and make some sense of this crazy world so we can find a way to make it healthy and unify our human family and take care of one another. So much love. Thanks a lot. Bye.